Well, it's uh, plenty happening on the macro front at the moment. Uh, let's see how this is all playing out, particularly as far as currencies are concerned. Lachlan Meekin joining us from Go Markets. Lachlan, good to catch up with you again. All right, hey, so uh, we looked at the uh, the Aussie dollar certainly overnight uh, falling again. It's uh, it it's sort of under sustained pressure at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, Andrew. Uh, I mean, yesterday's CPI, which was mixed but really mostly soft, um, certainly didn't help. You saw a big repricing of what the RBA uh, rate hike expectations were, looking at the, the bond futures. And I mean, we were pricing in only a few days ago the, a 20% chance of a hike next week. And, and after yesterday, that's completely gone. And there's even a small chance uh, priced in of a cut and, and literally nothing else for the year. So that kind of puts us out of step with the, the other major uh, central banks. You've got the Kiwis and the US um, looking like there's one more at least. The Europeans, two or three, depending on the, the hike size next week. And, and and the Brits with uh, two more. So those um, rate differentials will certainly start coming into play, I think, and, and being a big headwind for the Aussie dollar. Um, along with, you know, as we know, the commodity prices have really come off with oil, copper, iron ore, um, even gold struggling around this 2000 level. So, um, yeah, a lot of headwinds for the Aussie. It looks like, like it, it may get down to its lows of 2023, I think, which is a major support there at about 60, 65 and a half US cents. So um, I think next week we'll see if we get there or not. If that holds. Yeah, if that is confirmed and uh, the Reserve Bank does uh, stay where it is with rates, then as you say, sort of out of sync with its global peers. Plus, of course, Lachlan, uh, given it's a commodities currency, we have seen commodity prices under pressure of late too, and also some questions about China as to whether um, the growth that we've seen, whether that's sustainable, whether that's all been priced in at this point. Yeah, I mean, there was that optimistic kind of boom once all the lockdowns ended, wasn't it? And it was probably a big bang there, and we've seen a bit of stagnation since. So I think the there's got to be some questions about global growth when you see commodities doing what they're doing, especially the bellwethers like copper, uh, iron ore, um, and oil especially. So there's obviously some people trading those markets who are foreseeing a slowdown in the global economy. And, and certainly the Chinese is, is part of that story as long as well as the US, which seems to uh, be some cracks forming as well. Oh. All right, elsewhere, um, Japan. Look, we've got the Bank of Japan meeting. Of course, they do have the new governor. There are uh, perhaps speculation that uh, he may actually shift policy. Maybe not this meeting, but um, maybe uh, going forward. Uh, what's the expectation there and how's the Japanese yen looking? Yeah, it's, it's going to be an interesting one tomorrow, Andrew. I mean, the expectation is nothing changes, and that's, that's the messaging they've been giving. Um, there was a lot of bets, I think, on them in their March meeting, uh, if you looked at the interest rate swaps and the, the options market, um, that they would do something with the yield curve control then, and obviously they didn't. Uh, a lot of those bets seem to be pared back, so it's calmed down a bit. But um, this could be a, a perfect time for the Bank of Japan to actually go ahead and do something out of the blue where they'll get most bang for their when the markets are really under position for it. So I don't think anything will happen, but um, I wouldn't count it out completely. I'd be a bit nervous being short the yen going into tomorrow. Um, I mean, UAD has made dovish comments that nothing's going to change, but uh, Kuroda made very similar comments before the December meeting where we all know what happened. So um, certainly a, a, a small possibility of a surprise, but, but either way, I'm very bullish on the Japanese yen. I think it, it's had a really good run um, from a very low point uh, you know, that I got down to late last year. So uh, it's been shown to, uh, one, of the, one of the other reasons I'm, I'm bullish on it, not only because the Bank of Japan's policies is going to have to change soon, whether it's next week or June or July, where the market's more expecting it, um, which is obviously bullish for the yen. And also, interestingly enough, I think the the safe haven status of the US dollar is is not preeminent as it was. You've seen the yen and the Swiss franc, um, especially the yen, really outperform US dollar when there's been that flight to safety, such as uh, you know, big down day in the market, or or even last night with this First Republic stuff. So, I think um, going forward, certainly bullish on the yen. I think it, it's it's certainly one to to keep an eye on, and, and you know, be on the long side of that is my, my uh, where I'll be anyway. Yep. Okay. That's that's an interesting take then, Lachlan. Uh, now you were referencing earlier just the RBA out of sync, perhaps with those other central banks. It's all going to come to pass next week, of course, a big week. Uh, for central banks with the RBA uh, on Tuesday. But we've also got the Fed 
and the ECB. Well, just on that, those fronts, then, where are you seeing that movement with the US dollar and the euro? Yeah, it's a massive week next week. Um, well, we'll start with the ECB. Uh, let's look at this. It's a bit of a toss up at the moment whether it's moving 25 or 50. The market uh, is pricing in, I think, about 75 basis points more for the year. So tomorrow, if it's a 50, then we'll get one more 25. If it's 25, then we're looking at another 50 if, if those predictions hold true. Um, I think a lot will depend on there's some data, big data out of Europe. I I'm starting Tuesday next week. It's it's. I think there's um, some inflation data. There's also some bank lending figures. Of I think that may tip the scales either way. Uh, the currently the market's price in. I think it's about 32 basis points. So 100 percent the 25 and about 20 percent chance of of the 50 as well. So uh, that'll be the data to watch starting next Tuesday out of Europe. I think that will definitely have a chance at tipping the scales to that 50. Um, otherwise, if that comes in, you know, on consensus on bank a 25 a bit of a compromise mm. hike with uh, with some of the banking stress going on um and the other question as far as the feds goes yep. 25 is is a, is is a definite i don't think the gp or the pc this week will change that um unless they come a long way out of expectation the, the, the most they're going to do is is change the needle on the expectations of further down the track which can change again as, as data comes so you can lock in i think at 25 from the fed uh next week but i think mostly actually will come from this statement because it's very forward looking with the, with the fed and what they're going to do next and there's they've even um priced in some some rate cuts later in the year so that statement will go a long way to repricing that curve i think you'll probably see where the most of volatility comes from